na even those that are only related sometimes are also blocked by the filtering software. So say articles that don't necessarily contain the um, subject matter or the, in this case, uh, pornography, but it's an article that discusses the pornography. Na nafi-filter din po yun. Apa. Uh, so, ano, wala tayong, ano dun, wala tayong objection on the, uh, with regard to that, that unintended uh, websites are also to be blocked if we, if we have this law? Well, uh, if we remember oh no, uh, this incident uh, a while back where uh, one of the uh, adult websites were, were blocked because of... Uh, and one of their content con uh, included a minor, I think. So that was uh, blocked. The, no, instead of blocking the link to that content, what was done was the entire website was restricted, was blocked. So there were issues that uh, arose because of that. Yes, Your Honor. So it's a potential problem when you when we when we implement the filter. We may be filtering some content which is not necessarily prohibited under our laws. But under our existing laws, not even for uh, for even for adults, bawal pa rin ng pornographic uh, sites, right? Because um, ri right now, if we distribute pornographic magazine here, that's against the law, even if the recipient is an adult. Tama po ba yun? Um, can we ask also P PNP to answer because the law, law enforcement, yes, sir. Uh, I guess, Your, Your Honor, it's not uh, uh, against it. There is a consent on the adult to have that. But for cases like uh, child pornography, Your Honor, uh, in child pornography, uh, we request the, the NTC to take down if there are children or minors involved in that uh, pornographic ano. Uh, so with uh, social media platforms your honor especially the facebook uh, they are fast in uh, removing uh, uh, child pornography uh, materials that are being circulated in the facebook and for the information for the information of the body your honor that uh, we cannot take down the whole website of pornographic ano. We only take down the URL, the Uniform Resource Locator, in which it contains child uh, pornographic uh, fe feature of that uh, website. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ibang law yun, di ba? Because there's a law uh, against child pornography. We are now accessing, uh, we are now denying access by all, not only by children, but even by adults, to material which depict children in pornographic uh, situations or images. You know, right? That's there's a law. And uh, ito, this is for the benefit of children. We will now block uh, access to sites detrimental or harm harmful to children. So not necessarily all sexual lang, ah, yung uh, suggestion ng, ng police, uh, ng PNP. Iba. Yes, sir. Your Honor, I would like to correct what I said a while ago that uh, uh, it is not uh, uh, prohibited. I guess there is that in the I RPC, that PC, uh, RPC, ob uh, ob obscene publication. But uh, again, as I said a while ago, that in other countries who are. Uh, uh, sa so, uh, so Pilipinas, I uh, think yeah. may RPC, but that's why. Kaya ko pinasok sa discussion is because we should not be too concerned about denying access of adults to pornographic websites maski walang child uh, children depicted in the por pornographic images because actually bawal bawal because we cannot even here distribute a pornographic magazine dito dahil bawal this an existing law so wag tayo masyadong maging ano pa doon maging uh, concern sa uh, the, ad the access of the adults kasi bawal eh so ganun po yan so can we, ano ba bang, sino ba yun nandun? Ano ba yun? 
Huh? Okay, we hear from the Globe and the Cable uh, representatives if you have uh, some inputs po on this uh, particular measure. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman uh, and members of uh, the committee. Uh, as we second actually the suggestion of uh, PNP, uh, the PNP representative, uh, Colonel Magas, on the inclusion of other materials to be banned, uh, particularly your honor, since uh, we want to protect children, it's not only sexual, sexual uh, uh, materials, but also violent materials. I think it's more pervasive, actually. So uh, uh, games and uh, movies depicting violence, uh, that's actually, it, it can beget the violence also in our society. So uh, we need to include that. Although it's mentioned uh, in the first part of the bill, it's not included in the harmful materials stated, enumerated herein. <coughs> yes, yes sir. Uh -huh. And with respect to the uh, blocking, actually we have a standing uh, process now with the PNP and other law enforcement agencies as well as the NTC. Uh, once we receive a request for blocking, we, uh, as a matter of course, do it and implement such blocking, Your, your Honor. And uh, uh, not to put our own horn, on the consumer side, we also uh, have a uh, CSR, which is entitled the uh, Digital Pump, pump Print, wherein we train uh, grade school uh, students from grade 7 to 12. Actually, it's part of the curriculum now of uh, Region 7. Uh, wherein the students learn how to, uh, to behave online, to secure the information, and to spot the uh, false information as well. Uh, uh, that will be all for now, Your Honor. Thank you. Junior, Tagabi. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. On the side of uh, cable television, uh, actually we are supporting to the uh, filtering of uh, harmful uh, materials, especially to the children, because we are also offering internet and Wi-Fi services to all the uh, public schools and even the public private schools. Uh, that's also one of our dilemma, uh, restricting those contents, because uh, as cable TV, we are just uh, delivering broadband services. And uh, we are also in the, uh, in the process of how to filter all of these uh, harmful uh, materials as stated in this uh, document. But there are also contents that, uh, sh uh, shall we say, subscribe content like Netflix. What if there is a content there that is very harmful to the uh, children? It's a subscribe content. Actually, uh, we are thinking about the, the social media, the Facebook, the Google. What about those uh, Netflix and other uh, same, uh, same applications? So, this is subscribe content. And also, uh, can I also add the gambling? Here, uh, there is no gambling here. Yeah. So that's, that's all. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the contribution. PLDT, sir. Attorney Ibai, ready? Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, um, Your Honors. Um, well, in, in behalf of the P PLDT group, we love this uh, initiative. In fact, uh, PLDT itself has a product also under PLDT Home no, that uh, actually um, if a uh, family uh, subscribes to the service that it, it uh, sort of like acts as a guardian online and uh, it really filters um, uh, all the all the content that uh, are harmful no, to to children and uh, whatever other content that the family deems inappropriate they they, they, they do that um, probably um, uh, Mr. Chair the, the only uh, um, 
uh, what's his, um, the only the problem I think is in the details. The devil is in the details in the sense that when, when, we, when we look at uh, appropriate or, or um, similar jurisprudence uh, on, on the topic no? in, the, in the United States, there were, um, there were cases wherein um, they, they tried to, uh, the case of uh, the Child Online Protection Act was first enacted. May I? May I, Mr. Chair? Yeah, yeah just briefly. Uh, so in, in, in this case, the, uh, the United States Supreme Court actually shut down the law no? because um, they felt that uh, the, the filters at that time, I don't know if, if the filters right now are as accurate as we want it to be, actually filtered also a whole lot of other content no? that uh, were deemed inappropriate or were deemed but, but were actually, when upon closer scrutiny, did not really fall under pornographic or any other similar harmful contents. No? So, that, that was struck down as violative of uh, freedom of expression, of communication, etc., etc. But the, the future case of the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Um, versus SIPA, which is the Children's Internet Protection Act. No? So, medyo mag, at first glance, baka malito kayo. COPA yung isa, Child Online Protection Act. The other one naman is Children's Internet Protection Act. This required... Um, K-12 schools and libraries in the United States to use internet filters and implement other measures to protect children. The first case, the COPA, uh, in comparison, was widely applied across the internet. So it's not in public uh, libraries or uh, public places. This was held constitutional, but their uh, caveat was, or their, the, the ruling was that... Um, This law was upheld as constitutional as a condition imposed on, consti in, on institutions in exchange for government funding. So it was held uh, constitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court because of the fact that um, the uh, imposition of these filters was basically allowed in exchange for funding um, public libraries and so and so. And if there were adults who actually used uh, the facilities like the public library and they wanted to access such materials, they would be given the facility to open or to allow these adults to, to, to browse this content. This was, this was the difference between the first one, the COPA case and the CIPA case. So we, we just wanted to, to duly inform this uh, committee, uh, Mr. Chair, that there are legal uh, jurisprudence also that kind of uh, split the hairs and uh, really nitpicked on the issue of uh, which are harmful, which are not harmful, what should uh, what government should 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 do, or uh, what the role of government should play in, in the imposition of these filters. And another technical consideration, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm not a um, computer expert or not, uh, not a computer engineer, but uh, from our network side, there are sites that are HTTPS. No, there's a special consideration given to secured sites that uh, even right now, as we implement the uh, anti-child pornographic law, there is some difficulty because of HTTPS sites wherein this harmful um, child pornographic uh, content hide under the mask of this HTTPS site. So the solution that um, uh, governments abroad, or the best case solution that, that we found when we studied the issue was that uh, there is a public key infrastructure, there are trust certificates supposedly that uh, private uh, service providers, like the internet service providers, can borrow in the United States before they're able to block an HTTPS site that uh, they deem harmful, they would have to get that trust certificate from the federal public key infrastructure to make sure that under the auspices of the government, these sites are being blocked. And, you know, we, we do not uh, do it ourselves because there is a protocol being followed under... Uh, to, to the, this HTTPS sites and um, sometimes if we uh, do it ourselves, the protocol is the HTTPS sites, we might be deemed as uh, uh, what, what we are doing, although might, might deem lawful no? <laughs> in our government, but if it's a foreign site, it may deem as a, an illegal act already. So that's why we might have to uh, seek government intervention on those uh, cases. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you.
because the, 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 the jurisdiction hosting the site might have an anti-blocking law. Ganun ba yung, ganun, para bang ganun? Uh, yes, 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 Mr. Chair. You cannot foresee yes, what yes, the, yes, the rules yes, are. Chair. So, um, uh, the best case mm -hmm. when we studied it is that uh, there might have to be some, like what the United States uh, does is they have a federal public infrastructure where they, where a uh, private entity who wishes to block an uh, uh, unlawful site uh, operating uh, and if it's an HTTPS site, because most HTTPS sites are, are really, uh, a lot of them are commerce sites, eh, like banking, like, you know, all these uh, uh, sites that really require encryption and heavy security. So in order to avoid that, the, the government put up a federal public infrastructure where it, they allow that you secure a trust certificate that is honored or that is uh, recognized digitally that it comes as uh, sort of like as a um, uh, backing no? from the from the government itself that this site has to be shut down has to be blocked because it is uh, recognized by the government that such act is deemed lawful to to, to do that no? to block that site thank you that's good uh, mr Oro orola is here of the ntc uh, uh, we're discussing, sir, the ano, the yung online child safety act. Obisamun ako sa tanong ko, the bill mentions uh, NTC tag. C can you t tell us what that is? Magandang hapon po, uh, 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 Mr. Chair and your honors. Uh, yun ni po sa nang gusto ko ma clarify, sir, kung ano po yung NC, uh, NTC tag na. No, you, you, NTC, does, you don't use the terminology, there's no NTC tag. In, wala po, sir. Wala po, sir. Ang, ang naalala ko lang, sir, pagka mayroon po mga na-block na websites regarding po dun sa child porn at in-access nyo ulit yung site na yun, mayroon po lumalabas na parang message. Yun po yung pagkakaunawa ko. Hindi ko lang po, sir, alam kung NC, NTC tag din po yung tawag doon, Your Honor. Oh, basta, you have established that there is the NTC has no such thing as an NTC tag. Okay, so we will yes, have to sure. plan. So if the law wants to, if the bill wants to introduce a new concept, we have to define what this is. Uh, so any other, uh, what's the position uh, of the NTC on the bill itself? Uh, so support po yung NTC yung honor sa bill na ito. Uh, gusto ko lang po i-clarify sir yung statement po kaya nung ating uh, ginawa from uh, the PNP. Ay, galing po doon sa uh, pag-submit po nila sa amin ng endorsement pertaining to uh, websites na kailangan pong i-block na na-mention po ata kanina kung hindi po ako nagkakamali your honor na ini-evaluate po ni NTC. Sa part po namin your honor, pagka-submit po nila sa amin, uh, fin-forward po namin kaagad sir yung, uh, yung endorsement sa telco para po i-block po agad kasi hindi po kami... Uh, gumagawa nung i uh, or capable na evaluate po your honor yung content po o yung nilalaman nung website kung ito po ay nagwa-violate po dun sa anti-child porn po your honor so po sa ngayon sino po PNP you wait for PNP to evaluate oh, then po, ma honor. make a recommendation and then NTC does not do the actual blocking you you the telcos do it oh, po your honor so, automatic naman po. I mean, wala naman kayong, wala naman silang PNP recommendation na hindi nyo pinagbigyan at wala naman kayong NTC order or recommendation sa telco na hindi naman nila pinagbigyan. Opo, Your Honor. Automatic po lahat na, pa, lahat na, na execute. Opo, Your Honor. So, okay. um, siguro po, Your Honor, may mga cases lang po talaga na na-mention din naman po ni Sir Kadina. Doon po sa mga websites na hindi po basta mai ma-block po yung mga HTTPS, yung mga ganun po na website po, Your Honor. Okay, so uh, I think uh, buti na, na, na sabi sa amin yan. So, uh, those who want to go around this law, uh, this bill, can use the HTTPS uh, route. Ganun, yun, yun po yung sinabi nato ni Ibay, no? Um, actually, uh, Mr. Chair, th that is the crux of the matter also in, in or, or the issue right now in also how to effectively implement the Anti-Child Porn Act. Eh. Kasi po, yun nga, sinisingil po kami bakit hindi po namin effectively ma-block ma yung mga sites na yun. But as, as, as I said nga po, yung, 
yung ginagawa po sa sa ibang uh, uh, mga jurisdiction is you, you 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 actually have to acquire this trust anchor certificate no and similar to that is the the federal public key infrastructure in the United States because HTTPS sites uh, while they are common targets for blocking and filtering the to block access to content made accessible via HTTPS filtering systems must either block the based on network and transport layer headers hindi po ako technical pero ang understanding ko po nito eh major po yung yung pag tinabi mo ninyong network at saka transport layer eh um, mas maski po yung mga ibang laman ng site na yun na hindi naman illegal or ano mabablock din ho talaga so yun lang po other comments uh, DSWD or De is DepEd also here? Yes. Ah, yes. Please, Attorney, uh, uh, ladies first, lang, Ms. Bautista of the DSWD. Okay, po, good afternoon. Sir, I have here the position paper of the DSWD. Will you allow me to read this? Okay, po. Sir, features na lang, ma'am. Okay, po. Sir, um, the department support the Senate bill. And then for the contribution of the bill enhancement, we are recommending the following. So we have here the recommendation, sir. Number one, for the explanatory note, on the third paragraph, it is stated that there are no studies involving internet-related crimes and where the victim are children in the Philippines. We are pleased to inform po that there are several local stud studies related to the internet and online sexual abuse and exploitation of children that may be useful as the reference. So we have here the sample of the um, studies, the national baseline studies on violence against children. This is on last 2016, the Council of the Welfare of Children in, partners in partnership with the UNICEF. Um, they released the result of this study that the data revealed that total prevalence of all forms of violence against children is at 80% and nearly half of Filipino children experience violence online. Whether sexual violence or cyberbullying, this is out of 4,000 child responded nationwide. And uh, another is the online child protection in the Philippines in 2017. The study was done by Teredes Homes, an international children's rights organization. It aims to examine the psychological impact of online child sexual exploitation to victim survivor. Results show that initial impact of the abuse to the children include fear, anxiety, depression, and hostility, academic and behavioral problem in school, low self-esteem, vulnerable to further abuse, inappropriate sexual behavior. The long-term psychological impact of the abuse include feeling of isolation and stigma, poor, poor self-esteem, trust issue, dissociation, symposium of post-traumatic stress and relation difficulties. The, the, last, the last two is the still ongoing, the National Study on OSAEC and the Global Kids Online. This study was the, uh, from the Social Development Research Center of De La Salle University. This aimed to see the issue the perspective of the victim survivors, families, community, social worker, law enforcement agency, and justice system. On the fourth paragraph, this law might be used as reference to ensure the protection of children from harmful materials in the internet. Section 9, duties of internet service provider of Republic Act number 9775 or Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009 mandate internet service provider ISPs to install blocking and filtering system for child pornographic materials and to report and cooperate with law enforcement agency for such violations. Section 10, Prohibition of Access of Pornography of Republic Act number 10929 or the Free Internet Access in the Public Places Act prohibit the access to porn pornographic site, whether child or adult pornography under the free public internet program. Also, Section 11, Protection of Children at the said law mandates the Department of Information and Communication Technology in coordination with the Internet Interagency Council Against Child Pornography and Institute in consultation with telecommunication companies and civil society organization to develop 
standard and mechanism for the protection of children online consistent with the existing law on the rights and protection of the welfare of the children. Section T, for the definition of term, letter F, for the material harmful to children, item number two, to include child pornography as defined under the section definition of term. Letter B of RA, seven, RA 9775 with reads, Child pornography refers to any representation, whether vi visual, audio, or written combination there, thereof by electronic, me mechanical, digital, optical, magnetic, or any other means of, of child engaged of involved in real, simulated, explicit sexual activities. This is similar to Section 4, Cybercrime Offense, Letter C, Contented Related Offenses, Item Number 2, Child Pornography of Republic Act Number 10175 or the Cyber Crime Prevention of 2012, which cited RA 9775 as one of the unlawful prohibited acts. 2.2 to include other prohibited acts, materials such as the social media posts that deposit a child being subjected to form of abuse in relation to Republic Act Number 7610, the special protection of children against abuse, exploitation and discrimination act, especially those cases with security and confidentiality issues. Even though that the act might be done in good faith, the long-term effect of such post and the bridge in the confidentiality will have more determined effect on the child to his her family and community later on. Using website or social media pages to promote online selling or of children or illegal adoption is violate several laws such as RA 7610, Republic Act 9208 as amended by Republic Act number 10364, the Expanded Trafficking in Person Act of 2012 and Republic Act 8552 or the Domestic Adoption Act of 9, 1998. Using website or social media page that promotes solicitation of money or in kinds to support the needs of a, ch of a child. Number three, section five, restrict for the restricted access to harmful materials to include all government offices, especially agency working with children to strengthen child protection policies by explicitly mentioning the installation of blocking and filtering software in the respective system. Number seven, section seven, duty to report. This is too similar to section nine, duties of the internet service provider of Republic Act number 9775 or the Anti-Child Pornography Act 2009, which mandate the ISP ISPs to notify the law enforcement agencies with seven days upon having obtaining the fact about the violation. However, ISPs have not yet fully complied with this provision. For the Section 9 on Online Child Safety Council, review the similar of the function of the same council with IACAP-P to avoid overlapping of the function. The IACAP P already have the existing frameworks, example, the National Response Plan for OSAEC 2016 to 2020 in the law with We Protect Global Alliance framework, the International Telecommunication Union, ASEAN Child, Pro Child Online Protection. The creation of the National Council must entail development of the mechanism from the regional, provincial city, municipality and preferably the barangay level that will coordinate, monitor and oversee the implementation of the law in the local level. Existing council like the interagency trafficking or IACAT or the IACAT P and, and the IACAT VAUC have organized the local interagency committee against trafficking and violence against children and their, against women and their children. There is also the regional subcommittee on the welfare of children or RSW, RSCWC in the regional and local child protection council in the province, province city and municipality level. And our uh, other comment to include private institution to the coverage as well 
as we do not see any reason for the exemption. And, and last, to include the provision of the education program for children, their family, and communities on child online protection. This will help the integration of child online protection in the current education system and development of the community-based program and services. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You'll be submitting that to us. No? Okay. Attorney Pakala of uh, DepEd. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, in behalf of the Department of Education, uh, we would like to thank you for the invitation. Uh, unfortunately, we are drafting the uh, position paper. And uh, prior to this uh, Senate Bill number 1499, we have already a parameters that was uh, uh, were issued by the Department of Education. But it is limited only within the department, considering that we have no uh, preventive measures will as a police power with the uh, internet uh, service providers. So this is a very uh, important to us, considering that we cater education to students and learners. And perhaps this is a timely and a good, uh, a good uh, time for the passage of this law uh, to protect the, the children, learners, not only the learners, but also the handicapped. In fact, uh, we also subscribe with the man manifestations as well as the suggestion that it must, it must not only limited to harmful materials. The Department of Education has already passed that it must, contain open, uh, it must also prohibit offensive contents that include but not limited to pornography, sexual comments or images, profanity, racial, and then violations of the gender uh, yung digad, uh, mental or physical disability. Likewise, uh, it also uh, prohibit uh, subversive contents which include but not limited to lending aid, comfort and moral support to individuals, groups, organizations that advocate the overthrow of the government by force and violence on the basis of treason, sedition, sabotage, espionage, or acts of terrorism. Uh, for the meantime, uh, Your Honors, uh, that's all for the Department of Education, but we will include some uh, comments as well, posi uh, position of the Department with respect to this uh, bill. Thank Anyb you. Anybody else? Any group? <laughs> okay, so, but before we leave the topic, may tanong lang ako sa mga telcos, because you're the ones actually restricting access, no? or blocking access to the website from a Philippine source uh, computer, ganun ba yun? Uh, address computer. So, do you, in, in blocking a website, which may also, may, which may be hosted outside of the Philippines, do you st still need to be conscious of any law? Do you need to follow any law in the blocking of a website? Mr. Tobayan? Mr. Chair, as long as there's an endorsement from the uh, NTC with the, with the blocking immediately, and as, as a matter of course. You do not con need to concern yourself about the law or the jurisdiction where the website is, host is hosted. No need. Lana. As far as uh, we're concerned, right now the procedure is that we receive uh, instruction from NTC coming from the PNP and that uh, uh, to, to block uh, specific sites. And we, we do that as a matter of course, Your Honor. With PLDT, please. Uh, based po dun sa experience po namin sa anti-child porn, basta HTTP po, kahit po uh, hindi po siya based dito sa Philippines, nabablock po namin. But with regard to HTTPS, yun po yung talaga po may technique. Okay, yun yung capability to block the HTTP. Ang point ko sa from the point of view of your lawyers, wala na, they, they have no worry na. na for as long yeah. as you're told to block it by the government agency, you block it. No. Okay, so you need, no need to concern yourself with any American law, any e EU uh, regulations. So, walang ganun. Okay, that's very clear. So, well, we're ready to leave the, uh, the measure. But the, for those interested in submitting position papers regarding or about SB 1499, please do so at the soonest possible time. So, so we move to the next topic. And if the... Resource persons are no longer interested in some other topic. You're free to go and thank you for uh, attending our hearing. Okay, so let's move on.
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. No more, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chief Superintendent Marcos, you can go, sir. Thank you very much. Permission to leave, Your Honor. Thank you, Attorney. Yes, those with no more concern can leave. We will now go to Pondo sa Pagbabago at Pag-Asenso or the P3 program. So, Attorney... Jay Kerubin will tell us the salient features of the said measure. Uh, the, P3, uh, the P3 program aims to encourage micro-enterprises to av uh, avoid informal sources of lending by making financing more accessible and uh, also providing them loans with lower interest rates and without collateral requirement. The bill proposes to institutionalize the P3 program to address the, all the financing concerns of micro-enterprises throughout the country and especially those in the poorest province. Let us uh, suspend for one minute. Okay, so uh, our hearing is hereby uh, resumed. So, any comment? Uh, maybe DTI, because uh, this is uh, this is an ex existing program. Tama, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, if, uh, this is an existing program which we now want to uh, institutionalize. Okay. So, any comments from the DTI and the uh, SB Corp? Small, yes, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Abanto. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, we'd like to express our gratitude for. Uh, the measure to institutionalize the program. We believe that it will uh, ensan, enhance our efforts to impose a better governance framework for the implementation of the program and also ensure its uh, sustainability uh, because the interventions like this really need to be uh, taken from a strategic viewpoint. This is going to be a long-term effort to address the problem of 5-6 in our country, in our culture. We appreciate the bill as drafted and we support, but we would like to, <coughs> we'd like to comment on two points, sir, on the draft bill. First is the issue of pricing. On section six of the draft bill, it provides that the interest rate to be imposed on the loan availed of by the P3 fund beneficiaries shall not exceed 2.5% per month. This is actually the interest rate that we are imposing at the moment. But we would like, we would request sana some leeway for the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Council to review the pricing regularly either pwedeng ibaba, pwedeng itaas. Depende po sa behavior ng market. So, it's, isa po yun sa i-request ire namin. The other thing, sir, is the on the allowed uh, expense for the implementation of the program, uh, the bill provides for not more than 5% of the disbursed funds to be uh, used to support the implementation expenses of the program. Uh, actually, that is also at the level where we are implementing the program now. 
But as the program grows and becomes more complex, magkakaroon po ng incremental increases in especially on the monitoring. Iba po kasi ang cost of monitoring a 2 billion portfolio, for example, where it becomes 5 billion or 10 billion. It will become more complex. And another thing that we have found out, kailangan po mag-invest tayo sa capacity building ng uh, the conduits, our partners in implementing the program. And that is why we estimated that uh, the cap should be raised to 10%, not more than. Uh, yun naman pong paggamit ng expense na yan is actually, will be governed actually by uh, actual uh, demand because we account for this. Eh. We explain this year to year to the DBM when the expenses are required. And on another note, uh, we report also to the SMED Council on how this program is implemented, including the expenses uh, in implementing the program. Anyway, sir, the 10% is just a cap. Mm. The other thing is the sourcing of these uh, expenses for the program. What we actually charge dito sa pondong ito is only 2%. 2% for the corporation, for SB Corporation, because the other earnings from the fund goes to our partners. So, kung 2% lang po ang kikitain namin from this, hindi kami makakakuha ng enough. In fact, at the moment, we are subsidizing the program with our other regular facilities. Uh, subsidizing, subsidizing either directly we absorb the cost or uh, when we forgo the growth of other, our other portfolio in favor of the P3 program. So, sana po, the statement is uh, to be sourced either from the earnings of the fund or from uh, allocations as needed. Yun lang po, uh, sir, yung aming allocations provided by the, in the GAA. In the GAA. Uh, that is the practice at the moment, sir. Binibigyan po kami okay. ng specific. Can we, oh, sige. Uh, yung 2.5%, gusto mo ng konting leeway. So, pero you don't mind kung lagyan natin ng range? Range, okay, pwede po. Okay lang, range. Oh. Subject to review po ng ISMED Council. Ah, uh, no, sige. Within the range, you, there's a fix. The, the rate will be fixed. And then if it is going to be changed, it's to, subject to the review of the, the council. council. Pwedeng oh. ganun, ano? Pwedeng oh. ganun, wording natin. Uh, actually, ang kailangan lang naman po <coughs> talaga ay cap. Kasi kung... Ano po, kailangan? Ang kailangan lang naman po talaga na i-fix ay yung cap, kung gaano kataas yung... Yung uh, max, maximum. maximum. Kasi maximum. kung mababa naman po, yeah. advantageous naman. Hindi mind, uh, maximum. Tama, uh, maximum. So, uh, ngayon, ang uh, ceiling, ang ginawa namin, 2.5, ay uh, masyado mababa. Basta, uh, at the moment po, it is working. Pero in the future, baka kailang i-review. Okay, And that is why we are asking na magkaroon ng leeway yung council to review it. And then the 10% that you are asking for to support the administrative and operating expenses, house bill 10, eh? 10%. Yeah. Sa, sa house bill, okay. Opo. And then, sige, can, you, can you tell us more about what SB Corp is and then what are your other products uh, that you're subsidizing? SB Corporation, po, so far, is the only, other than Land Bank and DBP, SB Corporation is now the only remaining government financial entity that provides lending or financial services to MSMEs. Other than credit, we provide venture capital, equity participation. We provide microfinance. And there was a time that we were also providing guarantees, but guarantee, I think, will be rationalized. And we, uh, more importantly, we are also mandated to provide capacity building, both on the supply and demand side of the credit market for SMEs. That's why we have ongoing trainings on rural banks, uh, cooperatives, on how to lend to enterprises. And the same manner, yung mga kliyente na papautang under our programs, binibigyan yung capacity building. Basically, financial literacy, how to manage this business better. These are known programs, but we are formalizing this. In fact, we have uh, formalized an institute for SME finance for this in cooperation with the uh, University of Los Baños. And uh, nagtitrend po ngayon ang uh, operations ng SB doon sa mga markets na hindi naaabot ng mainstream lending. 
One indicator of that is the sizes of SB loans on the loans that we directly lend to SMEs is only about 800 to 900,000 per borrower. The appetite of the formal mainstream banks is at least mga 3, 3 million po kasi economic sizes ng loan transaction nila. So below that, nahihirapang mag-access. Yung, yung tinatawag nating missing middle. On the other hand, yung microfinance natin, rarely naman na makalampas ng 150,000. So in between 150,000 to 3 million, parang doon kami nag-trend. Other than that, there are special sectors in the economy that needs to be attended to. There was a time that we have about 700 million exposure to enterprises that were destroyed by the Yolanda. Ay wala naman pong pwedeng magpautang sa kanila given the fact na kung ang banko kasi, hindi man makapagpautang sa kanila because at the outset, right up na yun eh. Hindi, hindi credit worthy. So mabuti na lang po na mayroong entity like us na may flexibility and we actually exposed uh, more than uh, one-third of our capital to the area. Fortunately, hindi naman po kami na sira doon. Ang uh, siguro mga 15% lang ang magiging loss doon. But compared doon sa resulta na nakarecover na yung uh, mga nasira na SMEs doon, eh, I think it was worth it. Ito po ay magiging model because ngayon naman, nire-request kami na mag-implement ng program, similar program, dito sa nangyari po sa Umpong. Uh, our people are already in the north. As we did with, uh, what are, every time na may calamity, natatawag po kami. We also have an exposure of about 100 million doon sa Marawi. And uh, in fact, yung mga sundalo natin na uh, nasugatan o namatay, we also help the families. These are very specialized programs. Ito yung mga nasa peripheries na economy, but nonetheless important. Other than, isa yung sa mga nat natututukan po namin. Other than the main missing middle na tinatawag. Ah, hindi lang po siguro kami masyadong kilala ngayon because, one, the scale of our operations is limited by our capital. We are authorized to have 10 billion in capital, but the paid up is only 2 billion. The rest of the funds we had to borrow from international sources. But it raised the cost of our funds to about 4.75%. So, mabigat na po yun. Kasi, ang impact niyan halimbawa, ano nagpautang kami sa Yolanda, we had to charge 6%. Eh, parang kahit kami na nagpapautang, ay mabigat sa loob namin na nasira na nga. Walang-wala na nga, it's a charge upan ng 6%. But we had no choice. But these are the problems that we are slowly getting to solve. We just want you po to appreciate na we are doing that and we believe that something like this is necessary for the country. Ito pong Petri, for example, uh, just allow me to elaborate. Meron po kaming nakikita na role, for example, na in-anticipate namin ito eh. Ang napaprioritize dito is to fund mga palengke. Kasi po, pag mataas ang presyo ng funding sa palengke, ang tama niya sa presyo. Sa presyo ng binibenta na uh, commodities at sa presyo ng pagbili ng commodities from the raisers, the farmers for example. So it redounds to the economy. Ang effect, katulad na natin kita natin ngayon na mataas ang presyo. But on the other hand, the government has invested a lot on the demand side of the economy. One iteration of this is the CCT. Naglalagay ho tayo ng malaking... But this will drive consumption. There should be an equivalent investment dito sa production. And kaya nga po itong na-disperse namin mga 2 billion na so far sa P3, nasa palengke yan, at saka mga nasa kooperatiba to support production. O, kasi, uh, and the... Uh, so far, that is the strategy that we are doing. Uh, hindi po kasi ganun kasimple magsabi na labanan mo lang yung 5-6. There should be other strategic impact to the economy. And that is uh, how we are doing this program, sir. Mm. Sabi niyo, sir, P3 program ninyo, ang out ninyo almost 2 billion? Tama. Almost 2 billion at the moment, uh, How about for your other programs? Ang other programs namin is about the same, sir. Two billion, another 2 billion. Uh, 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 these are for 
these are for for wealthier borrowers na kasi P3 na yung pinakababa natin, di ba? Hanggang 200,000 po ang P3 loans. Up to 200,000. Provided po, ang nakakaabot ng 200,000 ay kung may empleyado na yung enterprise. Otherwise, mga hanggang less than 100,000 lang pwede mong hiramin. Pag may empleyado na yung enterprise, pwede ka na mag-qualify yung 200. Uh, so, to, uh, to 200,000 max, maximum. Max okay. po yun. Okay. Kumusta po ang ating uh, repayment uh, or collection so, rate? So far, sir, uh, maayos naman ang collection rate at the moment, but it's so too early to tell. But we anticipate that uh, hindi tayo matatalo rito uh, financially and economically because we are 2 billion lang kasi ngayon ang napapalabas namin eh. This only involved 244 cooperatives in the country. It's easy to find 244 cooperatives in the country now that will be credit worthy with enough discipline to assure repayment. So, ang next stages ng P3 is how to expand further. Oh, with this present portfolio, maganda po ang performance. Reliable ito mga partner namin ngayon. Wala kami na experience na uh, defaults. Nagkakaroon lang kami ng uh, minor problems on consistency ng documentation and reporting and arguments on how to interpret the 2.5% a month na presyo. But nasusol naman po ito uh, as we go on, as we audit our portfolio. It's the prevailing interpretation sa 2.5% a month? The prevailing interpretation is add-on. Ang gusto namin po kasi, eh, based on diminishing balance. Practice po kasi ng microfinance, eh, medyo mas mataas kesa sa 2.5% uh, diminishing balance. Mas mababa po kasi yung effective nun eh, if you un unwalize. Huh? Kung ano yung nakapabor sa MSME, yun, yun ang dapat interpretation. Yun po ang ina-advocate namin. Which is diminishing balance. Oh, to, apo. No, but we also have po to uh, listen din to our partner Kunduwits. We don't want the implementation of P3 the rate of implementation and the scale of implementation in such a way na masira naman yun existing markets natin sa microfinance, which is doing its own, having its own usefulness in the market. We don't want to directly, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, distort the market. No, but uh, we have to go back to the rationale of the Kayo, DTI ang gumawa ng P3. Oh, We're oh, trying oh. to institutionalize mm -hmm. it. But why did we have the P3 in the first place? Because to uh, help who? Mm -hmm. uh, it's really meant sir, for enterprises. Enterprises that are at the moment uh, forced to borrow very high cost of funds. Mm -hmm. Marami sa kanila are borrowing not even from microfinance institutions the formal. They are borrowing from non-formal, non-registered lenders. Yung, ganun po, ganun po it, it, ito sir, tignan mo itong bill natin. For example, yung version ko on page 1, section 3, objectives. A, B, and C. Uh, after reading the objectives, how will we now interpret the 2.5% interest? I think sir, that the 2.5% interest is consistent with these objectives. Yeah, and the diminishing balance. Well, the diminishing balance. Oh, yeah. so the, even if may angal yung partner institutions nyo, eh, so, so be it. Yan ang purpose ng loan natin eh. Uh, yes, sir. That is what we impose at the moment. Ang sinasabi lang po namin ngayon, eh, sometimes there are uh, discrepancies, interpretation na nakikita namin na uh, oh, you always go back to why we enacted the law in the first place. Or kayo, DTI, why did you have that program in the first place? Oh, oh, oh. Para ba tulungan yung mga co-ops o yung ultimate uh, beneficiary yung MSME? It's, it's really the ultimate. Yeah, uh, yun na nga. Uh, so, uh, 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 nagtataka ako why there is still a debate. Hindi ko maintindihan. But, but if necessary, sir, we have to clear, 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 to make it clear sa law. You yes, tell, tell uh, us uh, 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 what, which section natin ilagay. Tama uh, po yun na maglagay tayo ng cap. Ang uh, ano lang po namin, subject to the review of the council. Hmm. Ano po yung cap? Agree tayo doon. Cap, oh, cap talaga. Oh. But you want nga a higher cap eh. Yung 2.5. Uh, sa akin ceiling eh. Not to exceed eh. Yes sir. So gusto mo nga higher amount. Right? Not at the moment sir. No but you want the flexibility. The flexibility. Yes. Oh, no, I understand. Oh. No, yung, 
na I, I, let us let us fix the 2.5 in the law but allow uh, a higher ceiling but to move the 2.5 is subject to the review of the council yes sir uh, okay. Ganun, okay. No, pero why are you called uh, corp, small business corp? Are you SEC uh, incorporated? No, sir. We are created by law. Republic uh -huh. Act uh, 9501. Yan yung pangalan binigay sa inyo, Opo. corporation. Uh, we are created under, the law actually is the Magna Carta for micro, small, medium enterprises. This law provided for two things. One is the creation of the small business corporation to provide financing, capacity building, policy, advocacy, mission. The other is the creation of the council, the MISMED council. The third element, pala sir, is it mandates the banks to lend at least 10% of their portfolio to micro, small, and medium enterprises. So, so thank you. Any other inputs? And ito na si chairman of the CDA, Orlan uh, Rabanera, please. Thank you, so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you so much for... Uh, this kind of invitation. Yes, we are so happy that the cooperatives are included and can access the P3 fund. Mr. Chairman, for your information, we have now about 28,000 cooperatives with some 14 million members. But about 85% of these belongs to the micro category. And they're actually into this kind of approach in liberating themselves from the quagmire of poverty. Alam man po natin, especially our poor farmers, they're inside the vicious cycle of poverty because they do not control the mode of production and marketing. And along that line, the, this line, if they are, have an access to the necessary funds, then they are able to break the vicious cycle of poverty. And so with this, Mr. Chairman, yung ang joke dito eh, uh, pinapatay namin ang 5-6, pero hindi ang mga Indians. <laughs> pero... <laughs> Ang kwampo nito, I guess, we, uh, even in Mindanao, for example, where we came from, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I guess uh, about 100 to 150 billion, the total asset of the cooperatives. Ang kagandaan po nito, while the cooperatives are actually uh, providing loans to their uh, members, but this is at very much uh, lower price and, and lower interest rate. And... Uh, with that interest, uh, during the General Assembly, uh, a part of this goes back to the, to the members by way of dividend. Kaya nga po, now I'd like to tell you this, Mr. Chairman. You know what, overall, this is what I can say. Kaya nga, thank you so much nga po, including cooperative to access P3 fund. With this, it will really help in generating employment. Don't you know, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the total contribution of the cooperatives, about 28,000, directly employed, yung mga personal po nila, would reach about 530,000 directly employed. Yung indirectly, Mr. Chairman, well, we can claim is more than 2 million. Sabi nga ng isang kwan, alam mo, Chairman, aalis na lang, iwanan ng pamilya, nagtaiwan dahil sa kooperatiba, paano yun nangyari? Ay, ganito lang po yan. Isang nanay, marunong magluto, gusto magkarinderya, Punta siya sa formal banking system, makahiram ba siya with all of the requirements, collateral, uh, ano ito, mga prostated check. Punta siya sa kanyang cooperative that very day, pwede siya magtayo ng karinderya. So, siya mismo, uh, self-employed. Eh, later, pag lumaki na, meron ang mga waiter yan or cook. And so, amin pong itong kinuhinta lahat, including yung mga gusto ng mag-asawa, mga binata, walang mga trabaho. Hiram siya sa kanyang cooperative Gusto gusto siya mag ng taxi, makiram siya, gusto siya motorela or whatever. Kinintu po namin ito, Mr. Chairman, umabot ng more than 2 million. And so along that line, uh, here's uh, the truism that collective power of the people through their cooperatives would really be the liberation force. Pero ang problema lang nito, uh, at the onset of the Asian Free Trade Ag Agreement, we do not want that our cooperative, our country will be tied up to the funds coming from uh, the, in, the entry of funds coming from other countries kasi ang investment and capital are free-flowing na. Kaya nga po ang kuha namin, let it be, uh, kasi naman ang mga cooperative talaga, Mr. Chairman, is following self-reliance. Before we rely on uh, outside sources, yung ati mo ng mga, mga resources. Maliliit lang siguro po yan, pero when 
uh, a group would collectively pull the resources together, eh, malaki na rin po din yan. Kaya nga po, we have good stories to tell on this. And so, if this will be the case, then we will have a big uh, celebration of the cooperative as we are now. We'll be celebrating the co-op month, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I guess in some of, of the activities, we'll invite you. Uh, uh, yung po ang kwa namin ngayon, Transformative Cooperative for People, Planet, Prosperity, and Peace. And before I proceed, Mr. Ch uh, and Mr. Chairman, we have here our partners, BSP, Land Bank, uh, DBP, and the LGOs. We are now, uh, we'll be implementing soon, in fact, it's already a law, yung 10744, uh, the Credit Charity Fund Law. And we are now having about 53 to all the country where the LGOs and the uh, uh, LBP and DBP together with the cooperatives are pulling the resources together so that they can actually finance the increasing uh, projects. Would you believe this, Mr. Chairman? I just came from uh, Antique. Uh, meron ng hotel ang ating mga micro cooperatives doon. Meron silang training center. And then, sir, pagdating ko po sa Iloilo, sabi nila, uh, gaya hindi namin, gusto rin namin magka-hotel dito ang mga kwan. Sabi ko, but the question of funding. And so with this, CSF, with this P3 fund, Mr. Chairman, the cooperative movement, sir, under your leadership, will go a long way in liberating our people from the number one enemy of this country, which we must defeat, that is poverty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, any other comments? Uh, yes, um, dito si Ms. Tomas. Thank you, the, Mr. Chair. Of the so BSP. Yeah. From the BSP. Um, our comments, uh, Mr. Chair, can be formalized and submitted to the committee at a later time. Pero sa ngayon po, we would like to also support um, the bill and the objectives that it espouses. And our comments are also mainly along the lines of what Mr. Abanto of SB Corporation and uh, um, Mr. Ravanera mentioned. Kasi, sir, um, on sections 5 and 6, these are on the uses of the fund and the features of the fund. Aside from um, lending through accredited uh, private financial institutions, kasi we may also even take this opportunity to strengthen nga the guarantee fund mechanism. Because based on studies, po, the reason why our private financial institutions are not lending to this kind of market is because of the risks. And that risk, if it's shared with a certain guarantee fund, for example, like the way that the credit surety fund is designed right now, it may encourage most of our banks to lend to uh, these type of markets. So for example, now, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Chair, we have 163 rural and thrift banks that are lending to micro-entrepreneurs with a portfolio of 16.9 billion pesos. Um, yung, and kung kapag mas marami kasing choices po yung ating mga MSMEs, kung saan sila manghihiram, da mas dadami po yung um, competition na magko-compete out o magka-crowd out ng ating mga informal lenders. So I think the core, the root cause of the issue is really competition at that level and also the number of providers that are providing those kinds of services. So um, the, the, oh, another reason for, for these private financial institutions not lending to that market is the interest rate na. So I, I think generally if there is a certain cap and that, that cap does not address their cost of funds, baka po mas lalong hindi sila ma-encourage na mag-lend. So I think yung proposal po that the, the cap is reviewed or maybe anchored on what is reasonable for them in terms of uh, profit margins and also on what is also uh, beneficial for our target beneficiaries like the MSMEs, baka pwede pong ganun ma-word yung ating um, provisions in the law. And we can provide more detail on this in the proposition paper that we will submit, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, also, we might also want to focus the use of the funds in terms of the capacity building. Because another root cause of why our MSMEs are not scaling up and are not really successful, yung, yung rate po kasi of success of our MSMEs are, is very low. Be, the, and the cause of that is their capacity to do business, capacity to manage their funds, capacity to access markets. And that capacity building side, um, silent po yung uh, provisions of the law at this point, but we believe that if we put it as a possible use of the fund, 
um, baka po mas um, mag, mag grow ang ating MSME sector. There are also other types of blended financing, for example, venture capital, equity financing, leasing, factoring. These are different modalities that may help our MSMEs because as we know, various sectors po yung MSMEs natin. So, some sectors might not really need loans at this point, but more they, they might need more uncapacity building and then access to markets. So, th the uses of the fund can be um, innovated uh, based on those terms. So, uh, and again, we will formalize all of these in our uh, position paper to be submitted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you also comment on the 2.5% on the interest in the position paper ninyo? Um, on where it should be imposed? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. On the loan amount or the diminishing balance? We will po. Uh, Generally, po, the current regulations of the BSP, we, we uh, impose diminishing balance. Yun naman pala, may existing na pala, may existing na kayong guidelines on... Uh, Opo, for our banks. So, actually, that, sh that should not really be an issue. So, we have rural banks, ma'am, ano? And sabi mo, also catering to the same... To the same yes, side. yes, okay. Mr. Chair. 163. Rural banks ba? Rural, rural banks and some are thrift banks. These are mostly banks. catering to MSMEs. Okay, so thank you very much. <coughs> Meron tayong mga market administrators, no? Ma'am, market, sa, sa markets po ba? At... Uh, Familiar ba SB Corporation sa mga market vendors natin or market administrators natin? Have you ever heard of this uh, uh, the small business corporation? Yes, Your Honor. In fact, sa, sa market po namin, may cooperative din at uh, ini-introduce nga yan, PT3. Saan po yan, ma'am? Saan? Central market po. Central yeah. market so, okay. cooperative. Okay, now, yes, now, they have heard of uh, is a small business corporation. Mm -hmm. I understand, but uh, we have also uh, Arangke Market. What's a bill? Three million, I think. So, if... DBP uh, is here? DBP? Uh, yes, ma'am, if you have any comments, Ms. Yanwaria. Uh, very brief lang, Mr. Chair, our comments. We say here that we support the microfinance program that promotes entrepreneurship development. In fact, DBP has the Small Business Puhunan Loan Program, which is a non-collateral program targeted for micro and small enterprises with interest rates of 9 to 10 percent for a repayment period of one to two years, respectively. And it can provide loans up to 1 million pesos. The borrowers, though, need to have individual tax returns. Meantime, BBP is not included in the current financial institutions that have access to the P3 fund. If being a conduit of the P3 funds is aligned with the appropriate bank policy and if specific stipulations of the bill will be revised and approved, then BBP can explore the possibility of being an accredited participating financial institution of the P3 fund. Again, we are amenable to any move by the BSP to loosen requirements for the microfinance borrowers. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So if, if there are uh, no more comments, uh, I think, we, I, I think uh, the committee wants this to be fast-tracked. We will have to propose this formally on the floor through a committee report. So we will now call for a technical working group to finalize uh, the bill and then uh, accommodate the ideas shared uh, this afternoon. So the committee's, the committee secretary and uh, attorney Kerubin, um, my staff, will uh, ask you for your participation and support for the TWG. PSP, because actually you mentioned the CDA. SEC, SEC should also be involved. SEC. DBP also. Okay, so okay, so we will move on. We will now go to the timbangan ng bayan, the topic. Okay. Sige po, uh, Attorney Kerubin will tell us the sa salient features of SB 1970. Uh, Senate Bill Number 1970 and House Bill Number 7875, or the establishment of timbangan ng bayan centers in public and private markets nationwide, pushes for the establishment of uh, Timbangan Abayan Centers in public and private markets through the Department of Real and Industry with the participation of NGOs. It, is also, uh, it also provides additional acts uh, which covers uh, 
um, fraudulent practices relative to weight and measure and that it increases penalties for illegal acts under the law. Uh, we welcome any comments. DTI? DTI muna. Ma'am, DTI muna tayo, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Maglalang. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, the DTI uh, supports the objective of the proposed legislation uh, to provide for the establishment of Timbangan ng Bayan uh, centers in all markets nationwide as a safeguard uh, from dishonest business uh, practices through the effective counter-checking of the accuracy of the weight and quantity of goods being bought by consumers. The department, in coordination with the various LGUs, has constantly distributed the uh, Timbangan ng Bayan to different public markets across the country. The Timbangan ng Bayan aims to discourage uh, deceitful business establishment from tampering with their weighing scales. The inclusion of this measure in the coverage of the DTI proposed revised Consumer Act has been ensued by incorporating a provision on the establishment and maintenance of Timbangan and Bayan centers nationwide. The department views that consumers will be better equipped against fraudulent practices in the purchase of different basic commodities in markets throughout the country. Further, uh, imposing stiffer penalties for the violation of the acts relative to weights and measures of goods may address compliance issues among vendors. We reit uh, re reiterate our support for the objective of the proposed legislation as a means to promote consumer welfare and wish to recommend that this bill be included and incorporated in the current discussion on legislative proposal on the revised Consumer Act of the Philippines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Sanchez of the League of uh, Provinces of the Philippines. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The League of Provinces support the principles behind this Timbangan ng Bayan Act. However, Mr. Chair, we'd just like to seek some clarifications here because we've read that one of the tim uh, the LGs are supposed to put up a Timbangan ng Bayan in flea markets or changes. So we're just looking here. I, I, we really don't know because there's, there's no definition here of what a flea market or changi is. But basically, in our imagination, it's supposed to be that talipapa. So we have a little concern here in, uh, on, on the matter of economies of scale. Because basically, in so Talipapa, they, they are also what they call this, um, more, more ambulant vendors. And then we can see a Talipapa in practically every other street in our, uh, around the metro, the metro. And then, so, parang, eh, would it be really practical po to put up a timbangan ng bayan there? Then considering na uh, yung volume din ang binibili dito sa Talipapa is really very small. Now, although, yes, it would help our consumers, but on the, on the practicality of it, kasi yung market uh, administrator, marami rin po yung ano, lalo na kung, mar kung maraming ano, small markets within an LGU, baka naman po, pag ikot pa lang ng talipapa, hindi na ano, he. so just, just that po, Mr. Chair, just a definition of flea market and changi. Otherwise, we support the intent of the bill. So, uh, flea markets and changes uh, operate with permit from the LGU? Some talipapa po, no. Okay. No, Mr. Chair. But for the talipapa, which have permit from the LGU? Siguro naman, we can expect yes, that there should be a timbangan ng bayan because uh, as stated by... Uh, Mr. Maglalang, this is for the benefit of the consumers. Wala tayong choice. On that aspect, Mr. Chair, we have no problem about okay. that. Okay. Kapag may perm uh, they run with permit from the yes, uh, LGUs. Uh, Pero yun pong mga maliliit talaga nating talipapa, yun po yung ano natin. Which you may not even, the LGU may not even be aware of. Yes diba? po. So, totoo naman yun kasi pwedeng ganun, okay? So... We'll take that into consideration. Ma'am, sino po sa ating mga ano? Hmm? Mrs. Uh, Miss Adelaide. Juliet Peredo. Yes. Apo. 
sa Maynila po naman, talagang lahat ng palengke ay binigyan ng ating alkalde ng timbangang bayan. Lahat po yan. Pero kaya hindi mabibigyan ang mga talipapa, wala silang store. Kaya ma maaaring mawala yung, ano, yung timbangang bayan na yun. Hmm. Uh, weekly naman yun, uh, kinecheck ng ano yan, ng wait and measure. Kaya, kaya ho, ano, hindi pwedeng manloko ang ating timbangan. Yun po ang ginagawa ng ating munisipyo. Reklamo ma, Mer pero marami ba bang reklamo tungkol sa maling, maling timbang o tsaka maling sukat? Meron bang ngayon? Wala po naman kaming natatanggap dahil sa may rin nga nag-check niyang ano, timbangan. At the same time, nandun po kami, kung may magre-reklamo, dinadala namin sa market master. No, kaya na, pwede mo kami kwentuhan ng isang insidente na may nag-reklamo and then paano, anong nangyari po sa reklamo? Na-resolve ba ba ang reklamo? Kasi... Ka, konti lang po ang masasabi natin na kumisan ang mga mamimili ay tamad na magtimbang-timbang. Kaya wala naman nagre-reklamo. Dahil sa kung magre-reklamo man, mayroon po tayong market master para mag-react doon sa reklamo na yun. Other ma'am, ano, mayroon po ba tayong... Gusto pang sabihin po, Miss uh, uh, Espiritu? Ako po ang Pangulo ng Central Market. Ganon din po sa amin. Ang timbangan bayan sa amin, nasa gitna ng palengke. Kaya po ang bawat mamimili, kung karne, isda, eh pwede silang mag-check doon sa timbangan bayan. Kaya wala naman po kaming natatanggap na reklamo. Yun po, Your Honor. Klaro nga ako. Ngayon ay meron, ta meron na tayong timbangan ng bayan. Yeah, uh, does the DTI uh, uh, confirm this? Ne, sa mic, sir. Sa mic. Uh, mic uh, yes, yes, Chair. So meron na tayong timbangan ng bayan. Uh, tinitignan ko kasi ano pa yung, ano yung purpose ng bill. Eh. Uh, sabi is the center. Wala, pero wala tayong center. Pag sinabi mo timbangan ng bayan sa maglalak, anong nasa isip mo? Meron lang tayong weighing scale but there is no office? Yun po ba? Opo, ganun po ang nangyayari. So, hanap lang po na space sa palengke na available and then uh, to make sure lang na may magbabantay, baka mamaya mawala o masira yan. So, yun lang po yung ano. Ano rin yung DTI doon? Kayo yung bumili ng weighing scale? Kami po yung bumili ng weighing scale na yung then, iba po, yung iba. Yung karamihan po, kami yung bumili. And then, dinistribute niyo po sa? Mga palengke po. Pala hindi sa kada LGU, palengke ang binigyan ninyo. So, okay. pwedeng... In coordination po with the LGU. Kaya nga, so pwedeng more than one sa isang LGU kung marami siyang ano. So. And then after that, nung binigyan nyo na po, pagdating sa ta tao, sila na. Sila LGU na, na maghanap ng tao na gagamit nung uh, timbangan. So, yun po ang nangyayari ngayon. Act actually po sa ngayon po, nangyayari. Kaya wala po nagko-complain siguro. It's, uh, it's a means of a deterrent po sa mga ano eh, sa mga pwede manda, yung mga magbabalak mandaya. Pag nakikita po nila kasi na merong tayong timbangan bayan dyan, natatakot sila mandaya. So, perhaps, yun po yung isang nagiging uh, purpose ng timbangan bayan natin. But, uh, I think, uh, uh, the establishment of a center is much more uh, needed po. Thank you yung penalty pa, tinaasan pa. So, sige, kung, kung wala naman, para, pero galing po sa testimonyo po ni, ninyo, Miss Peredo, tsaka Miss Espiritu na, sinasabi nyo na wala naman talagang kayong maraming issues na na na-encounter tungkol sa, tim, sa aligasyon ng maling timbang at maling sukat sa mga palengke ninyo. Yun, at least nas na-establish po natin yun. Kami po kasing mga asosasyon, katulong po kami sa palengke. Kaya po kung sino man yung may maling timbangan, nalalaman na po kagad ng, ano, ng gobyerno. 
kami na mismo ang nagsasabi na kumpiskihin niya ang ano na yan, kiluhan. Kasi kaya ko nasabi kasi kung sa batas nga ngayon na ang penalty ay 200 pesos at saka kulong na halos isang taon, wala ka na halos na tatanggap na reklamo, di lalo na kung gawin pa natin 50,000 pesos at kulong na limang taon. Hindi ba? Da, di ba? Kasi nga ngayon, 200 pesos, one year. Sabi mo, wala namang problema. Wala nga na. Pero is this just a Metro Manila issue? Sure, sa iba, sa... sa ne, sa probinsya. Say, Mr. Maglalam, please tell us At what you know sa, sa probinsya. Iba po. Uh, una, uh, hindi natin alam kung uh, may mga established na association that, that will help the LGU in implementing uh, rules. Ano? Uh, at hindi rin po natin alam na lahat ng LGU may hindi mga timbangan bayan. So, hindi po natin alam kung lahat ng munisipyo po ay mayroong Pero sa project ng DTI, nabigyan nyo ng, hindi, ng timbangan yun? Hindi po lahat. So, uh, hindi po kaya kasi ng budget ng detail lahat na i-provide. So, we are just... Uh, so, pwede ba namin malaman kung ano yung... Pwede ba namin malaman itong committee kung paano... Meron kayong programa ng timbangan ng bayan distribution ng mga timbang? Anong ginawa ninyo? How, how much? Ilan? Sino recipient? Pwede ba namin malaman yun? Sige po. Uh, bibigay po namin. Ayan, no. Kasi actually ngayon naisip ko na baka itong dapat ko dalhin sa out of town na hearing kasi para makuha ko yung pulso sa labas. Kasi baka... Kung Metro Manila, baka iba, iba naman sitwasyon dito. Ano pa ma'am, Miss Pedro? Pe ano po, karamihan po sa mga may bayaan na timbangan, sa bangkita po yun. Yun po ang mayroong bayaan. Masyado ng informal yun. Ano na yun? Ah, mga kolorong na kolorong na yun. Dama, tama ba yun? Wala mga permit yun, kahit sa wala LGU. Yung, ano, wala po. Uh, wala. Basta yung mga, ano, mga sa karsada, wala po yun. Uh, risk na kasi nung buyer yun. Kung talagang pumunta ka sa lugar na hindi naman talaga dapat may palengke doon, pero may nabibilang doon, bumili ka, eh, pinatimbang mo pa, wala talagang control doon. So, but although a crime must, uh, must have been committed also, no? A crime also must, must have been committed if ang pinaka ano siguro no baka stopa siguro no may babagsak sa mga other forms of uh, swindling siguro to stopa okay any other comments yan na lang sige uh, technical working group na rin natin ito uh, if DTI ma'am kayo po yung asosasyon ninyo kung handa kayo at okay sa inyong tulungan yung committee na Uh, i-finalize na. Gawin natin perfecto yung mga bills po. Magte-technical working group po tayo. Pero bala ko sana, yung produkto ng technical working group, which is really our final form, kung pwedeng daling ko rin sa isang out-of-town hearing, ipa-confirm ipa ko lang sa karanasan nila dun sa, sa ibang lugar outside of uh, Metro Manila. Okay. okay, so we will, uh, we, you will just be given notices kung kailan po yung ating technical working group. So we, we leave this topic and we move to the last uh, by Pinoy Bill Pinoy Month Act, uh, Senate Bill Number 721. Sige. You have something to say about But after the DTI, sir. Ms. Uh, Benohan, please, of the DTI, and then Mr. Rabanera of the CDA. Yeah. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, we highly appreciate for the, this bill uh, introduced by Senator Cynthia Villar because it supports our marketing programs. Um, Every year po, we conduct at least 20 regional or national trade fairs. And six of them are held in the month of November. We want to have a bigger event, so, but uh, we have limited space. Like we and SITEM would like to collocate our events so that we can attract uh, more customers. But we have limited space. And some, uh, most of the time, the malls have already reserved the, the spaces for other events. So if we push through with this bill, siguro we have to request the malls or other uh, provi providers of facilities to reserve the month of November for the National Trade Fair. Like for 2019, so we will be holding 
regional and national trade events. And uh, six of them will be held in uh, November. Oh. And uh, yung, kasi sir, nakasalagay dito, two weeks yung duration of the, um, of the trade fair, which is just fine. Kasi in other countries, I, I think they have one month, um, one month uh, trade events, di ba? Which not only attracts local uh, buyers, but also attracts tourists. Uh -oh. So, ang um, concern din namin, sir, is uh, the budget, kasi um, it will be more expensive to hold an event for two weeks, not just for the government, but also for the exhibitors. So, yun lang ang aming ano, sir. Gawin, Met Metro Manila pa rin? Ang nakalagay sa bill ho ni Senator Villar po is uh, all over the country. Pero normally kasi the regional and the national traders are held in Manila, sir, because the institutional buyers are here. Rustans, Robinsons. Nakita ko na under the bill, you must, uh, oh, you must have it three in three places. Opo, Luzon, must, Visayas, ito, Mindanao. Must, otherwise, Opo. maging violation tayo ng batas. Uh -huh. Although, like, uh, Central Luzon, said, um, most of the regional trades first are held here. Si, si Bicol, si Region 8, Region oh, look, 1, recently, recently, Cordillian. Diba? Oh, oh, oh. They're all here kasi nga siyempre Imperial Manila pa rin po tayo. Yeah, I'm pointing that out kasi kung, oh, kung oh. as is itong bill, oh, oh. maging law, mm -mm. required ka po sa tatlo. Oh, oh. Although sa Cebu, uh, Region 7 po talagang holds it there. Si Davao din holds it there kasi siyempre they also want to compete with Manila. Pero the rest of the regions, they hold it here. And Region 12 also hold it in, holds it in Region 12. Uh -huh. Basta Luzon, all Luzon regions, sir, and some Visayas regions are holding so here. So, natin apat eh. <laughs> Metro Manila, Kama Luzon, Kama Visayas, Kama Mindanao. Kasi otherwise, yung Luzon mo nga, Mm -hmm. You'll all hold it in Metro Manila, compliant mm -hmm. ka na sa Luzon requirement. Uh -huh. So for November... Okay ba yun, ma'am? Kaya niyo ba yun? Y yes, sir. Uh -huh. Apat. Apat. Mindanao. Apat na lugar, simultaneously. Mm -hmm. okay. Si Cebu, they hold it really in, in Region 7, normally in Bohol. Mm -hmm. Si Davao talagang, they really hold it there in Davao. Yun lang, sir. Dapat we have the cooperation of the malls. Kasi we... Yung malls are the usual venues kasi because of the food traffic. Like uh, the malls versus uh, World Trade Center, we attract 40,000 visitors. Pero sa World Trade Center, sir, 5,000 lang unless you really go full blast. On the so if we push with this, tapos may cooperation ng malls. And siguro, I don't know if it's possible to have additional budget also. Can you compute? Uh, so for a four-day event, sir, ang budget ko normally is 8.2 million. So kung, kung two weeks, ano yun? Times three. Be 8.2 mo for? For four days, sir. Four days. Ah, five days pala. Sorry, sorry. Five days. Apo. Times three. Apo. Times three mo. So eight, mo, eight times three, 24. Apo. Yun lang, sir, ang 24 ating, ano. times 4, because 4 places na tayo simultaneously. Mm -mm. 96, 100 million. No. Although may, may mga existing budgets naman kami, sir, like, um, I have, oh, oh, I have, makano uh, ba? 12. I have budget for two events. Uh -oh. Pero maganda kung sabay-sabay nga, sir, para bigger, uh, bigger attraction. Sabay-sabay, but separate, ha? Malalayo ito, isa isa't isa. Yan mm -hmm. nasa bill eh. Mm -hmm. Saba, in November, two weeks in November, simultaneous national trade fair in, gawin ko ang four different locations. Mm -hmm. Luzon, Visayas. Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, and Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. Kasi otherwise, kung di ko ilagay yun, parati na lang yung Luzon, Metro Manila na mm -hmm. lang. Yan ang point mm -hmm. ko. So, where it will be limited to Filipino producers, uh, mm -hmm. service providers, and products. Kaya ma'am, 100 although, million. Uh, although parang technically, sir, pag ganun nga, hindi talaga national yung scope ng event. Kasi like sa Visayas, syempre, ang participants lang niya ay from Visayas. Sa Luzon, siguro ang makukuha kong participants, kasi ako yung organizer na National Trade Fair, uh, mostly taga Metro Manila po. A good point. Uh, Na-realize ko uh, na ngayon. So maybe uh, we can amend the bill. 
na isa lang ang location pero iikot na lang next year for today is uh, for this year's Metro Manila next year is uh, Visayas next uh -huh. year Bindanao next year yan siguro uh -huh. baka ganun uh -huh. so you a good point tama kung uh -huh. apat mo simultaneous it's not a national trade fair it's an island uh -huh. trade fair uh -huh. You have, a, you have a very uh, good point. Parang national sa Pilipinas. <laughs> Tama ka, kasi attraction nga naman ng turista, mm -mm. isa lang sana puntahan niya. Pag-aralan natin mabuti, uh -oh. but yun lang, yun lang yung uh -oh. small detail uh -oh. na yun. Or yung two weeks, sir, naka-allocate na for the first week dito sa Manila, uh, second week na sa Visayas naman or Mindanao, pwede rin pong ganun. Or so, akala ko yung consumer yung products nga eh. Ah, yes. The products okay. in the Visayas uh, trade fair mo, will most likely be the Visayan products. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yun yung point mo. So, Apo. hindi rin na, hindi naging national product. Well, 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 maganda uh, po yung point na na-raise ninyo. I will di mm -hmm. also discuss this with the author. But at the same time, uh, a technical working group na rin natin ito to, to, to improve it. Ano. Yes, but, thank you, ma'am. And then, uh, Mr. Uh, ma'am, are you, are you done? Hindi pa? Yes, sir. Okay. Apo. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Yung, ah. yung space limitations din, din din ang aking concern, sir. Kasi like sa SM Mega Mall, tatlong holes lang talaga yun. Uh -oh. Na ang capacity lang po is mga 300 exhibitors. Yun. So, pwedeng sabay-sabay. Yun nga lang, we have to have their cooperation, sir, na naka-reserve na for this event itong mga malls nila. Malit lang ba yung 300 exhibitors? Malit lang po yan? Uh, kung bongga talaga, sir. Uh, hindi, malaki na rin po yan. Sir. Na rin yan, di ba? Oh, Pwede sir. na yan for a national trade fair. Oh, uh -huh, yes, sir. That's that's the usual number uh, of exhibitors. So. But if you want it bigger, then pwedeng two simultaneous uh, venues ang mangyayari. Hindi, kayo eh. DTI will be the lead agency. Kayo, yung mga detalye niyan, kayo na po yan. Basta, ah, yes, but just, uh, you just have to convince the people mm -mm. and make them proud that it is a, this is a national trade fair. Hindi lang naman yun, pagpunta nila doon, ano ba naman klaseng ano ito? Pagpunta nila doon, walang kwenta yung mga goods na nakita nila or hindi sila proud. Nasa sa inyo na po yun, how to... May mga events? Sanay naman kayo sa events eh. Yes sir, yes sir. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Rabanero of the CDA. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. Uh, the CDA, together with the cooperative movement in the Philippines, are in full support of this bill. Why? Mr. Chairman, this is our strong advocacy. Let me approach it, if you allow me, from a broader angle. We have a very strong advocacy, and we say that buying is like casting a boat, choosing from different economic alternatives, foreign versus local. The problem, Mr. Chairman, is that our country has become a dumping ground of finished products from everywhere else in the world. And that, ang kwan po natin is that if you buy the products coming from other countries, you support their economy, you support their livelihood. And that's the reason why many of our countrymen are going abroad every day just to find jobs in other country. And so it is our strong message, buy Filipino, buy Pinoy. But then, Mr. Chairman, so it is... Uh, choosing from different economic alternatives, partner versus local. So therefore, we buy local, we buy Pinoy. Choosing between organic and inorganic. You know what? This is a problem here. Uh, so much are being used, uh, chemicals, just to produce, especially in the beautiful island, Mr. Chairman of Mindanao. Mr. Chairman, may I also report this to you? Uh, being also pro coming from the environmental movement, they produce fruits. But sir, I'd like to tell you this. Based on our research, of the 14 chemicals that you are using, eight, sir, are banned already abroad. And so po, marami pong mga anak na pinapanganak, mga babies na pinanganak doon sa Mindanao, eh wala na pong mga daliri because they, they use inorganic chemicals, really. But the cooperatives, the Pinoy, should be organic. Next measure, Chairman, is Essentials versus non-essentials. Ang problema po sa ating bayan, we are so bombarded by advertisements. You buy this, you buy that, so that you'll be happy. You smoke this, so that you become whatever. But then our point is that uh, if you buy the products of the Pinoy, especially of the cooperatives, you are buying what are locally produced, 
what are essentials and what are healthy foods. Yun po ating strong message. And next month, Mr. Chairman, we will be celebrating Cooperative Month. And Mr. Chairman, you'll be amazed. The cooperatives throughout the country are now into value chain. Saan ka po makikita ng mga uh, the best dairy, the best cheese in the Philippines is produced by the cooperatives. It comes, Mr. Chairman, from our very own place, El Salvador, uh, in uh, Misamis Oriental. Mga dairies, mga whatever. Kaya alam po, ang question is, nabibili ba ito? Eh, baka, makakita po ang mga Pinoy ng advertisement. Sasabihin lang na ni Baby James kay Mami Chris, Mami, ano ang sulit? Ang sulit na kay Nido, o nakalimutan na ang, ang ating by Pinoy. Nido na. Kaya ang problema nito, the advertisements. Mr. Chairman, we produce uh, healthy foods like in Balingasag, where will you find a group of cooperatives, ARBs at that, uh, plus, uh, value chain on cocoa sugar? They will not be selling any more mga copra, cocoa sugar at that. Ito po ngayon, ang kwan, we can give you the profiles of the products of the cooperatives and that uh, it's really uh, to the benefits of the Philippines. But the, Mr. Chairman, if we buy Pinoy, we are also solving another big problem. Why? Because po, na-discover namin, I do not know, Mr. Ch uh, Chairman, but uh, what, yun lang pong pinabibili pala dito sa ating bayan. Uh, I don't know if our friend from the DTI would uh, support this contention. Passes at least five to seven layers. Five to seven layers. That ang lipitor po na binibili lang sa India ng 30 centavos ay pinabibili po rito ng 40 pesos or 50 pesos. Ang mga fertilizer po na binibili doon sa Ukraine ay only 100 pesos ammonium sulfate. Pagdating sa Mindanao po, 1,500 na. Who bears this burden? Our poor farmers. Kaya nga po, ang kwanko, while, while we buy Pinoy, we also would like to banner the tourism, Mr. Chairman, that we, we erase these marketing layers and that we go by what you call direct buying, direct selling. So it is in this uh, light that we are really advancing this. But, Mr. Chairman, it is time that we would also uh, strongly advocate that somehow yung ating po mga produkto, kasi po from our end, eh, is not gaining momentum kasi hindi naman kinikira ng media. Twice, Mr. Chairman, we were able to host in the Philippines the so-called Asian Cooperative Business Forum. Ang ganda po pala ng ating mga, mga produkto sa mga kooperatiba, not only here in the Philippines, but throughout Asia. It is about that or intertrading. Mr. Chairman, believe me, siguro masusob natin ang problema sa rice. Bakit? Alam po ninyo, when we were in uh, Thailand and in Vietnam, doon ko nakita, how much is this ano, sold? Chairman, only about 10 pesos. What? Why? Per kilo. Kasi, when, during that time that our king went to your country in Cebu in 1997, the signing of the Asian Free Trade Agreement, nang, nang umuwi po ang king of Thailand, eh, nag-farming po siya. At sinabi niya sa mga farmer, huwag kang yung gagamit ng, ng chemicals, ha? Nasisira ang soil. If possible, do not use tractor, use carabao. Because the fertilizer of the carabao will fertilize the soil. Mr. Chairman, believe me. I asked the farmers there, alam mo, Arlan, ang aming kwan dito is only 6 pesos per kilo. Ang kanilang production cost. Doon sa, dito sa atin, 22 pesos. Ay talagang mahal. So again, buy Filipino, buy organic, and we will actually, Mr. Chairman, along that light, and if I, if, if, if I may add, I'm sorry, buy, buy cooperative also. So thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I just uh, pose this question it, regarding the bill. Do we need to define what is a Filipino product? Because I just imagine what if uh, there's an imported item and yet li Filipino label ginawa ko siyang parang handicraft. Is that now a Filipino product? But it's an imported item. Ma'am? Sa amin kasi sir, sa screening namin, we only accept um, products that are made here in the Philippines. Oh, the yung sugar, it can be made. Um, made here, nga. I can be made, uh -oh. he, made here in the sense that uh -oh. I assembled mm -hmm. it here, but mm -mm. merong, or, in, in the, let us say, hindi 100% imported, but may imported component. Do we consider it Filipino product? 
Ang uh, siguro sir. Siguro sa TWGF, sagutin na lang natin yun. Basta, okay, okay. Eh, eh, parang okay. pinapauwi ko lang sa inyo yung tanong na yun. Yeah, yeah. Kasi, yes, sir. Eh, walang iwas sa imported. Marami rin talagang imported raw material na, ano, na, mm -hmm. yun, the Filipino artist or the worker that uh, uses it, is, is it now a Filipino product qualified to be sold in our national trade fair? Okay, so any other comments? TTTWG din natin. So, kung wala na po, we have met our designated time and thank you for your cooperation. Our hearing is hereby adjourned. Thank you.